In this video, I'll show you how to adjust Z offset in version 5 of Creality Print Slicer. So lately I'm printing a lot on, on one of these uh, cool holographic colored textured beds, as you can see in this video, um, for a very cool bottom finish. So I suddenly care about adjusting the Z offset again, uh, especially with printing a lot with Silk PLA, which seems to like less negative Z offset. More on that in a bit. But uh, Creality version 5 slicer has no adjustment for that that I found. And I looked and looked. And so I figured out a hack which seems to work based on early testing. So stay tuned to find out how to do that. And also you won't want to miss a few other tips and tricks mentioned along the way, such as a bit about another hack I came up with to overcome PLA heat creep hard, uh, print head clogging on large prints. And uh, I'll talk more about that too. Um, so I already did a video of how to uh, how to adjust the Z offset in version 3. You can see that video here. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link. One of those card things. We'll see if I remember to do that. Uh, but this is what the video is called. You can find it with a search if you need to. Um, that shows you how to do it in version 3. And actually, you know what? I'm, I need to do it anyway for this. So here we go. Here's what you're going to do. And it's very simple. Um, what... What you need to do is uh, slice anything in version 3, Creality Print Slicer, and then go into that G-code, which is very easy. It's just a text editor. Notepad can do it. You can do it right in Notepad. And maybe I'll do it in Notepad this time. Um, so basically, put anything on here. I just put this cube in. This is Creality Print version 3, I believe. Um, Creality Print version 4. All right, this is Print version 4. Sorry. Um, so anyway basically you, you export you export to local your g-code and i like to put a uh i'm gonna go to my g-code archives folder and i'm gonna put the date code at the beginning just because i like to do that for my own purposes and that would be 0820 and enter and replace it sure <laughs> i already did this once and i realized i messed up the audio so i'm doing it again all right and so open local folder okay thank you save me a step um, and so I'm gonna right click on this file and I could say edit with notepad plus um, plus that's a program I use for text editing but you can even just do it in notepad I believe let's try it in notepad all right so basically we're gonna modify the uh, G code which is very simple extremely simple all free and simple um, it's very simple did I say it's simple all right so we basically we just need to slice this and copy one line out of the G code and uh, slice it in version four Creality Print, right? And then uh, save the G code, and then open the G code, and then uh, copy out one line, and then slice the actual model that I want to print in version five Creality Print Slicer, and paste the uh, the, that one line into that G-code and I'm going to show you how to do it right now alright so uh, important though is so if I if I just slice this and I didn't have my Z, uh, Z offset changed or set, set up in here it wouldn't give me the line so you have to go into experimental click advanced and um, enable G-code offset and you can leave this number what it the default or put in whatever number you want here you can easily change it when when we're already in the g-code you can change it you can adjust it there very simply so i'm going to save that and now so if i didn't do that first if i sliced it it wouldn't give me the line that's going to do the work for us so i save that and i export to local and i'm going to overwrite this file and then it should tell me it finished and would you like to open the folder yes and then i'm going to right click on this f new file here new g-code file and I could either open it with Notepad, or I usually use Notepad++, but I'll just do it with Notepad in case you don't have Notepad++. It's just as easy, really. And this is annoying me. Control F is brings up Find. So you can see here, it found Offset twice there, and then the third time should be this line right here. And see, it says Set G Code. If that doesn't give you a hint, can you see that? Is it off the screen? Okay, it's not off the screen. Uh, so set G code offset. You can see it's zero minus minus zero point zero five, which was the default setting. And so I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to copy it, Control C, 
and then I'm going to go into the version 5 slicer and I already sliced, sliced this nice shelf here uh, so you don't have to wait for it to slice and then I'm going to export to local and I'm going to put that in my G-code archives uh, folder and I'm going to change this to 0820A G-code just so it's not the same code as the first the date code is the other one and say finished open folder yes thank you and can you see this yeah you can see that on the screen and so now I why is it not the interesting because I I guess because I sliced it a half hour ago it's calling it earlier well whatever it basically it already saved it um, all right so I'm going to open this with notepad edit in notepad either way um, and so here it is and so now if I go here if I go search for offset it's waiting all right wow this is a lot slower than uh, notepad plus plus I'm learning a little bit because I'm not used to using it doing it in a notepad it's much it's much more user friendly in Notepad plus plus. I recommend downloading Notepad Notepad plus plus, but you don't need to. You know what's confusing me is that the format of the G code is a little different from version three from version four to version five. Uh, Creality Print Slicer, I guess. And so anyway, uh, in order to find the first layer, all right. That, now I remember. I think I need to go. What is it R colon zero, or it might be Z colon zero. Because in one it's at layer zero, and in the other it's Z zero. So if I go Z zero, uh, this is mildly annoying in Notepad instead of Notepad plus plus. forget it. I'm doing it in notepad plus <laughs> plus it's free you can download it or you can figure out how to do it in notepad but it's annoying in notepad uh, so I'm gonna edit in notepad plus plus and I'm gonna say control F for uh, offset is gonna get me that guy and that guy which is not where I want to be I want to be Z colon zero I believe which should bring me to the first layer yeah and maybe that it maybe it did that in Notepad. It was the, the text is smaller and it's and it lags. This is a lot quicker for whatever reason, um, and just e the find is easier to use. Um, but anyway, so this is basically saying I'm at layer zero, and you can tell because it's saying G1 Z.4 G1 Z.2. So that's telling me that this the height of the print is at 0.2 millimeters which is the first layer and so that's how I can tell that I'm on the first layer so um, and you can see layer change Z 0.2 and these are remarked out and with the semicolon so the computer ignores anything after a semicolon and so I that's just a little indicator of where we're at so basically um, after here bef before all this code here uh, oh, actually, no, you know, I've been doing it up here. So basically, executable blocks start anywhere after here in, in, in the beginning. And I want I could put it there. In the past, I put it here. And I don't think it matters, but I want to put it where I put it in the past. So that way, in case it matters which line you put it at. Cause like, if, you, if, I'm putting, if you accidentally put the cart before the horse, things don't go well. Uh, so I'm just going to go with what worked. And I'm just going to go paste, control V, paste. And so now you can see this code is here, and that will. And now if I save this and put this G code in my printer, it will. <laughs> I didn't change the Z offset, so I'm gonna go minus 0.02, which is what I, the setting I used, and for my shelf that came out nicely. Um, so now if I save that and I go print, now my Z offset is gonna be minus 0.02 instead of uh, minus 0.05 which is the default and so that is how easy that is now uh, another thing while we're in here so you can see 
um, temperatures. So start print extruder temperature 220 and 50. Um, I can adjust these in here. And so that brings me to the heat creep thing. Or before I mention that, um, also uh, M109, uh, M M140 and M104 and M109 and M190. Those are four commands for the temperature, and I'm sure I'm getting the order wrong. For the temperatures of the nozzle is two of them, and the temperature of the print bed is two of them. And the reason there's two of them each is one sets the temperature and tells the printer to pause until the temperature is reached, and then the other says set the temperature and then goes about its business and lets the temperature catch up. Um, and you can easily just Google search for G-code numbers, uh, you know, what's the G-code for nozzle, and a million resources will, will tell you that, so I'm not going to go into that too much detail. But uh, that's how you typically set the, set the uh, nozzle and bed temperatures is with the M104, M140, M109, M190. Uh, but th somehow Creality is using these custom, I don't know if it's custom or whatever, but they're using uh, English verbiage commands, and that's whatever. I don't know. I don't know how exactly how they work, but they're also doing it for this G-code offset, so it's kind of good that they're doing that. And I have a feeling that it might be this, 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 <laughs> this stuff uh might be telling it th those commands are that's like assembly language or something i don't know what the hell's going on but anyway so i'm gonna go back down to here so this is where where do we go oh and, and so that that'll do it but what i do like to do is say uh semicolon so then the computer ignores it and this is so i can like leave myself breadcrumbs kind of programming tip uh Oops, I don't want to do that on the next slide. So that way, if I'm somewhere else and I want, and I get lost, I can say and I can check my work. And if I do things on multiple layers, which I'll go get into in a second, I can say Control F and just my name, um, and it brings me to wherever I put my name, and that's where I know I edited anything. Um, and so the reason I would edit multiple layers is I had to last week is because I was having a very large print even bigger than the shelf and this was on my K1 Max too big for the K1 and I don't know like 15 hour print and I was having a bunch of failures and basically under extrusion failures a bunch of them uh, and they were it was basically because of heat creep I figured it out eventually okay I'm having heat creep issue and basically heat creep means uh, especially with soft filaments like PLA and I think silk PLA might be worse uh, it seems very kind of springy if that's the right word uh, and so it tends to the sort of the the extruder gets warmer and warmer and warmer over time because it's connected to the to the hot end right and so eventually the filament in there gets soft and thickens up before it goes into the nozzle into the heat break and it's too thick you know, too big diameter at that point, and then it just jams, and then your extruder starts clicking, click, 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 and you're not getting any filament out of it, and you just wasted a bunch of time and filament. And so, what I figured out I needed to do was that, so I realized that it failed at like 25 layers, and so what I decided was that every 10 layers, I needed to cool the filament off. And so basically, I modified the G-code to add every 10th layer to, um, pause the print raise up out of the raise the nozzle up away from the print <clears throat> turn the temperature turn all the temperatures off and crank the fan for five minutes straight to suck all the heat out of the print head especially the extruder and that way the filament doesn't get a chance to get too soft for too long and so then once it cools off for five minutes it'll resume the print and then the next 10 layers it'll do it again and the next 10 layers it'll do it again and yeah that adds like five you know 20 minutes to my print but it's a 15 hour print so it saves me a lot of time really when instead of having my print fail at eight hours and then having to do it another day and plus the filament and it actually works and it worked well and so i'm going to do another video on exactly how i did that it's pretty straightforward also so if you're interested in that uh stay tuned and uh, I'm probably going to do another video where I create, and I'm not a coder, so this is going to be funny, where I create a Python script using ChatGPT, or maybe I'll try Grok. 
Um, I'll test Grok out and uh, see if I can get it to make an autom a program that prompts me and says, you know, uh, how many layers between cooling cycles and how many, um, how long to cool it for, um, and things like that, and then have it point it to my uh, G code file and then have it modify my G code file for all these things. And actually, and then that same program, I would obviously ask it, have it ask me what I want my Z, Z offset to be and potentially some other um, adjustments as well as I come up with them in there maybe. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And so that's probably gonna be two more videos. So the first one will be the, uh, just how to set up the cooling cycles. And then the next one will be to automate it. And so uh, if you're interested in those things, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss them. And uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up if you made it this far. And uh, you might want to share it with some of your like-minded friends. Maybe throw it on on uh, Reddit or Facetube or whatever, whatever you like to use. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you, uh, I think you might be interested in this uh, video my imaginary finger is pointing to right here oh and uh keep your glue stick in a vice and don't let your heart end so uh thanks for watching and uh stay tuned